through the regular season undefeated and earning a spot in the finals of a 26-19 win over Party Mix last week in the semifinals, the 9-0 third down for White look to complete their path to perfection with the win here this afternoon in Brassard, Quebec. Standing in their way is an 8-1 Power Rangers squad who are not only looking to avenge a heartbreaking 30-29 loss to their opponents in week four, but are also trying to become the first ever winter season back-to-back -back champs. Welcome to the Bell Sports Complex, home of the Montreal Canadiens and host of today's Flag Plus Football Cold Ed Division One Championship game between the Power Rangers and third down for what? I'm Ben Bach and I'm joined by my broadcast partner, multiple time All-Star, Terry Tam. No, never. <laughs> In my head, I'm, a, I'm an All-Star for well, sure. There you go, and that's the count's most. <laughs> Welcome to the game, sir. You gotta change this camera angle here. What's going on? All right, so Thank you, Brett. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. So two great teams going down. Absolutely. Uh, the best in the uh, Division One of the Co-Ed Division. What kind of games should we be expecting this afternoon? Uh, just more, more of an efficient running style. Uh, Tab's going to be able to use his, uh, use his feet, get open, short hooks, short plays. Uh, nothing really deep. On both sides of the ball, I feel the same way. Power Rangers defense is extremely strong, so I expect them to be dominating the game on that side of the ball. Power Rangers with the... Power Rangers actually the defending winter champs in this game. First pass of the game, Villadef. He goes to the flask connected to Serge Pilon Jr. He's finally brought down on the play. I think we're going to see that a lot today, Serge. Uh, Brent, obviously, because Serge is considered to be the best player in this league, Division One, all the way down to co-ed. Uh, Tam Villadev trust him a lot. They play together in Division Two as well. Uh, so he's going to be going there, or going there a lot today, and I expect him to do so. So it looks to be about second, second and about two on the play. Two receivers on the left, two receivers on the right. Villadev gets the snap. He looks to his left. Now he circles back to the right, looking to throw. Big catch by Pilon. Able to avoid the tackle by Gaumont, but falling to the ground, bringing him down. First down now for the Power Rangers. Promising drive so far, Terry. Yeah, so far. I mean, obviously, like I said, he's going to go to Serge. But he did have Marie Louberin, who is somebody to look out for today. Uh, she's had a tremendous season. Uh, she's been on fire. She had 257 yards, 19 catches in the regular season with seven TDs. Uh, she was open on a kind of like a post corner. If he had, if Tam had floated it, it probably would have gotten there. Uh, Tam's got the arm, too. People think that he's just a running quarterback, but he does have a good arm enough to get there. In the regular season, Villadef with 35 touchdowns, only six interceptions. It's been spectacular in the playoffs as well. Get to his numbers in a second. He gets the snap. Right down the middle. He faces it. He goes to his left. He's looking to run. He finally tosses it to the corner. Just out of bounds. And Ted, the receiver on the play was Wade Shawcross Jr. Wade Shawcross is somebody that we're going to have to look at as well. He's a very capable player. He's played for Mongoose, Division Three champion as well. Um, what I did notice by Tam there is that he was able to bite on Charles Verreau. Uh, Charles Verreau, who is the, he was the Division Four B MVP uh, of yesterday. Uh, so it was, he was able to break him, and that was a very interesting call. Well, Dev getting a pass again now. Third down, catch. Just getting tackled. Oh, no, touchdown. Pardon me. Have to see who it was. Marie-Lou Bellin, number yeah, 11. Yeah, there you go. Marie-Lou Bellin, her first touchdown of the afternoon. So a big play right there by Bellin, putting her team ahead 6-0. Quick drive. I love the way Tam marched the field. He took one shot deep, wasn't there. He went back to Old Faithful, short routes right to Marie-Lou Bellin, right in her gut. Uh, Marie-Lou Bellin's first touchdown of the postseason right now. They came into the game, five catches, 54 yards in the postseason. But as you mentioned, Terry, no touchdowns. Going for two now are the Power Rangers. Bellin. But that part of me, he goes to the left, not to the right. He's going to run for it. Can he get there? Makes one man miss it, another. And he's just deflied by Alessis Gomal just outside of the end zone. So a 6 nothing lead right now for the Power Rangers. Something we noticed yesterday in all the finals is that extra points are huge. I mentioned it in a few times in the broadcast. Uh, extra points are huge, and that might, be, that might catch up to them in the end because we know Sarah Parker, she's a, a very capable quarterback. Uh, she's very efficient. She's going to be able to score on almost every drive depending on the defense uh, that the Power Rangers run. Um, what I did notice was that Jasmine Far uh, Farmer was wide open in the end zone and he didn't see her. So now Sarah Parker, 34 TDs this year to five interceptions. Averaging 12 yards a pass, she's going to take her first snap of the game. She gets it, scanning the field. She goes over the middle to Jeremy Murphy. Murphy makes one man miss and almost the second one finally brought out of bounds. It should be enough for the first down. No, it looks like it's going to be, yeah, indeed a first down for third down for what? So a successful drive, so successful beginning part of me to the drive by third down for what? Jeremy Murphy with the second best hair in the field, on the field right now second after me <laughs> of course um, but honestly we expected that Jeremy Murphy he had 31 t catches this year for 11 touchdowns uh, somebody to look out for as well on that same side of the ball is Rachel Baldwin second and 10 now the third down for what Parker gets the ball scans him into the field that pass is batted and almost it is intercepted 
Great job on the play number two, Valerie Verdi with the interception off of the tip pass by the Power Rangers rusher. Tommy Rodos Stratos. Yep. So Tommy with a great great play there. Just get his hands up, get in front of the lane. And Valerie Verdi, who does it, who doesn't pop out on the stat sheet all season, uh, but she does make a heads up play there, sticking to her zone, and she's able to catch the ball and get the ball back for Power Rangers. Yeah, so quick turnover on the first offensive series by third down for what? Giving the ball just before midfield to the Power Rangers. Philadelphia gets the snap. Looks to his right, and he's picked. Oh! That pass was almost intercepted right there. Number one, not on our score sheet. But that was a great play. Honest, honestly, I don't know how he dropped that. I think that it, if, if, you do, if you do that in a, uh, in a football camp, you'll probably get, you'll probably get cut if you You're just drop that on the spot. 100%. <laughs> but you know what? He was there. Maybe the next time he's going to drop it. He's playing from that three position. He broke down on that, on that slot for sure. That was a nice play. Second down now. Will Def. Looks like he's going to go to the flat, but now he's going to run. Takes it to his right. Miss. One man miss. Finally brought down on the play. So a gain of about, say, about five, maybe six yards on that run by Villadef. And that's some of the versatility he brings to this lineup. Absolutely. Tom Villadef is the most, one of the most elusive guys in this league. And it, it's huge for him to be able to use his feet and be able to dominate the offense like he's been doing so far in this game. So taking over the ball now. What I, what I want to see right here, maybe take a shot deep on the left side here. You have Nicky Farinaccio, who's a big body on that side. I know it's a good matchup with Jeremy Murphy, but it's, it should be a take, he should be able to take a shot deep. Time rolls oh. right. He breaks the tackle good here. right there. Looks like he's going to go. Nice catch by Bellon. Great catch. She ran a deep route. She came back because she saw the play was a little bit broken. She came back. She made a great catch. Marie-Lou Bellon is the outlet on this team. Serge Bellon is probably the X factor. Marie-Lou Bellon is the outlet on this team, and she's going to be able to, uh, to, to, to do extremely well on this offense because she's probably the most athletic one on her side of the ball. Good catch by Bellon. Attack on the play by number 20, Rachel Baudouin. A third down for what? Rachel Baudouin is somebody that's, that's popped out for me on the, on the stat sheet as well. She's a very good player. So first down now for the Power Rangers. Villadev goes to his left. High pass. It is brought down. Capillo get it to the end zone. He makes two players miss. And a third touchdown. Power Rangers. Serge Pilon, his first TD of the game. Sir so Serge Pilon with his first TD of the game. And I expect it not to be his first as well. Not to be his last as well. Um, great play by Tam. Be able to see his open, wide open receiver there on the left side. And Serge Pilon makes a great play, as you can see, running the complete opposite side of the field for the touchdown. And a great drop, too, keeping his feet in balance. He had two defenders to beat before he got into the end zone. Made about three, maybe even four tacklers missed on that play. Comes a conversion attempt now. Put her Power Rangers toss to the corner of the end zone. Nice catch, but she's just out of bounds. Not sure if that was Bellon on the play. I'm going to wait to see. I believe it was Magalou Bellon there. And she's open, man. She's going to be open a lot, too. I think that's a good matchup that they have with her lined up in front of Rachel Baudouin. Um, it's a very good matchup. Marie-Lou Marie Bellin was one of the better receivers in uh, Coed Division One this year. So now a 12-0 lead for the Power Rangers. Sarah Parker needs to shake off that pick that happened. It wasn't her fault. I mean, she, it was just a nice play by Tommy to knock it down. Uh, Valerie Verdi made a nice play and jumped the route. Uh, Sarah Parker, I know she's a very confident player. and She's got a great arm. I'm excited to see what she's going to do today. Parker gets the ball. And that pass is tipped again. And I believe that could be the second tip right there by Tommy Roldi Trajados. That was a great tip by Tommy again. I think Cyrus, the way the ball's coming out of her hands, Tommy's seeing it and he's just jumping, getting in front of it. Cyrus should be able to break him. If she's, if she, as, soon as, she's able, as soon as she's able to break the route, as soon as she's able to break the rusher, she's going to be able to see something wide open. The fact that he's jumping should be a key, key indicator for her to do that. So second down now, Parker gets the ball. She goes to her left, our right, toss to the left sideline. And that was kind of dangerous. Pilon was in the area, but that pass went well out of bounds. So Sarah's not looking at the personnel on defense. She's looking at what her play is going to, wh wh which play is going to develop, which is the best way to do it. If you start thinking about who's on the other side of the ball, you're probably not going to be super successful in this, in this game. So at the end of the day, if she's not, if she's overthinking, that's where the problems come in. So I think Sarah Parker, who's a very intelligent play caller, I think she'll be able to figure this out. She's got to get third, off the line, though. Third down now by Parker. They have yet to gain a yard on this possession. She goes to the right now. And that pass is caught in the flats. Good catch here by Baudouin. Rachel Baudouin, who is um, one of their better receivers. She had 21 catches this year, 242 uh, yards and four touchdowns. Uh, no touchdowns in the postseason. Um, but either way, she is somebody to look out for. And it is fourth down right now and just a little short. 
Yeah, so better pick up a four, maybe five on that play. Third down for what? They looked like they were going to punt for a second. They decided not to. A couple of the Power Rangers thought for sure to be punting. But third down now. Terry, would you go for, for, for uh, this early in the game? Absolutely, yeah, because you're in your own zone. You're, you're not going to be gaining much yards. Pass on the middle. Great catch. Charles Vero. Yeah, Charles Vero with the big catch right there. Got past the first defender. Finally defly by Pilon Jr. Charles Vero, uh, like we said, mentioned earlier, MVP of the Division 4B Finals because of a, of a pick six that he had, and, and he had a touchdown as well. Uh, he's a great player, very capable, and if it wasn't for Serge Pilon coming from a completely across the field, that would have been a touchdown. We would have had a 12-6 ball game. But good throw. Good throw by her. She noticed that Charles Vero was a, he beat his DB, and he beat him deep, so she just forced it over through the receiver. Only the receiver was able to get the ball. So for Vero, that's his first catch of the postseason. Great throw as you mentioned, partner by Parker. Looking to her left now. Good catch, Baudouin. She finally gets third down for what on the board. Wide open in the middle of the end zone. I love the patience Sarah Parker there. She saw Tommy in front of her. She just chilled, chilled, chilled. As soon as Tommy dropped from, from, from his little jump that he did, she looked and she had her, her friend, Rachel Baudouin, her number one receiver so far today. And you see a good job by, uh, there by Parker on the last two plays, really. The, the Absolutely. long fourth down play and then that play in the red zone. The pressure is right in her face. She hung in the pocket and it's made a strong throw. She's coming, uh, she's coming into her own today. I think, it's, she, I think she'll be fine the rest of the way. It's going to be a tight game today. So a two-point conversion now. By third down for what? Parker gets a snap. Scanning the field. Throwing over the middle of the field again. Out of balance. That pass was intended. Hitting for number nine, Sarah Bortoluzzi Corval. So a 12 6 lead now for the Power Rangers as they start their third drive of the game. So right now, um, third down for what needs to be very aggressive on defense. We saw uh, Edouard Arsenault, who was the player that dropped the, dropped the interception before. Uh, we saw him be very aggressive. I expect him to continue that way. Jeremy Murphy also as well. And you have Alex Sigamon, who's a very good defender on that side as well. I, I'm not surprised if they're going to be able to pick it off today. Vildef gets the snap. He's going to his right. Face back to the left, dangerous throw, dropped by Bellon, who was right in, in the middle of three. Throw it down for what defenders? You see how they converge on her right there? They know that she's going to be the girl to look at, right? So Serge is down the middle. If you keep everything in the middle, I think that that's what their game plan is. Force everything to the outside. Uh, it seems that they're not trusting Tam's arm to the outside. Uh, they want to take away the first read, which is Serge, second read, which is Marie Lou, and make him go to his third read. And you have Charles Vareau, who's a very capable rusher as well on him. Second down now in 10. Going to his left now, to his right as well. That pass over the middle, almost dropped. Good job on the second attempt to make that catch. Well, I think that is Jasmine Farmer. She's wearing number 96, but 96 on her stat sheet is Cedric Farmer, and I don't think her name is Cedric. No, but they're definitely related, so good catch. <laughs> <laughs> so good catch by her, kind of rolled good down catch her by knee. Yeah, exactly. Kind of rolled down her knee there. She's able to concentrate and get, uh, get just short of the first down, so it looks like it's going to be third and one right now. The uh, Farmer family definitely representing so far on this drive. A change of rush here. Third and one. Vildef pass to the left flag. Good catch by Bellon. Makes a spin, but she's tackled by Baudouin. But it'll be enough for a first down for the Power Rangers. Uh, she's got better hands than me, man. It's crazy. She, <laughs> <laughs> Marie Lou better Bellon. hair, too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, friends. Let's, go. Let's be serious here. Uh, Marie Lou is, is, is it, man. She's going to be the MVP of this game if they win. I really feel that way. She's going to be wide open every single time. She's very susceptible. She's fast. She catches extremely well. First and 10 now for the Power Rangers. Ball just above midfield, Vildef. He's going deep over the middle. He has a receiver. And Bellin, who you might have just jinxed there by calling her the yeah. MVP if they would have won. She <laughs> drops that ball. Good job by Bellin, however, getting past the defender. Jeremy Murphy. number 28. Exactly, Jeremy Murphy. Jeremy Murphy with the hair on that one. I think that he was looking. He saw it pick, 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 and he just he let Marilou get behind him. Um, honestly, that was a nice throw by Tam. Great play call. Uh, I think he noticed what they were doing there. He noticed that the deep ball, that, that Jeremy Murphy was dropping from that side, so it would have taken him a little bit longer to get to that point, and he was able to throw it over the DB. But a surprise, Murphy leading the team with five interceptions in, in the regular season, missing the interception chance right there. Here's a catch over the middle. Murphy makes the tackle. I think, that's, I think that was Jasmine Farmer again. Yeah, it was Farmer. Absolutely right. So so another Jasmine catch on this drive by Farmer. Jeremy Murphy's all over the ball today, and he he came from the uh, from the five spot on that right on the on their right side, and he's able to make the play in the middle on a short route. So he's running all over the field today, trying to make extremely big plays. And I think I expect him to make one big play at least on defense. It all depends on when it's going to happen and if it's going to be important enough. The ball else just outside the red zone for the Power Rangers offense. Twelve to six lead for the Power Rangers. Just above eight minutes left in his first half. Toss right over the middle of the field. Pilon 
good catch, but he tackled by Murphy. That was a great, that enough great awareness down. by Saris to kind of just sit there in the open zone. He noticed that Rachel Woodway was playing a little bit too far off, and, and Jeremy Murphy was on the opposite side of the field, so he sat right where he needed to be. Normally, Serge, I've been there. He breaks a lot of tackles in that zone. He'll just be able to move his, move his hips a little bit, and he's in the end zone. Now, with a defense that's so aggressive, like third down and what is, Terry, if you're the Power Rangers offense, what are you calling here? Right now, you call something basic with, with something over the top. He's a pass to the front, not listening to Terry, but a touchdown by not Farmer. Not to me at all. <laughs> that's why I'm here, and they're down there. Exactly. So, so great touchdown by Jasmine Farmer right there. She did a quick out, and it was a nice ball placement by Tom Villa Death. Right now, 18-6 for Power Rangers. Looks like they're starting to run away with it, and they started with the ball in the, uh, in the first half as well. I, I just, it's interesting to see what they're going to do in the red zone here, too, because they have a lot of speed. And when you're in the red zone, speed is so key. If you have a deep ball, if you have a jump ball, that's fine. But they have so much speed on this offense that they should be able to get behind their DBs, or at least in front, and just get quick passes, quick passes. They're going for one here. Trying to make it a three-possession game now. Build that face to his left. Good job of avoiding the rush by Vero. Oh, pass just off the hands of the receiver. I think that was... Belon again, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. So Marie-Lou Belon opened right down the middle. I saw Tam do this in the semifinals, actually. He, he gets so excited, and he sees a wide open receiver, and he guns it in there. But when you're four yards away from somebody, exactly. you don't have to destroy the person. You know yes, what I mean? That's the, uh, the Leon Holder syndrome. <laughs> exactly. I've played with Leon, and I know exactly <laughs> what it's like. I've broken a few fingers playing with Leon. Um, but he's just trying to force it in there, and I get it. He wants to get it as fast as possible. But, you know, it's a, it's a, he could have just pitched it to her. She would have caught it. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Leon, Leon Holder, a solid quarterback in his day, throwing bullet passes on two-yard hooks, <laughs> slant rust in the end zone. The Mario Pereca also. Yep. I've had a couple go off in my face <laughs> playing with Terry, uh, playing with uh, Leon. Alex David with the catch there, with the catch and run, his first catch of the game so far. Um, so Alex David is the, um, I guess I want to say the offensive coordinator in this situation, where Sarah calls her offense, but she's always going to look at Alex to say, okay, what do you think we should do on this? You know what I mean? Alex David was known earlier on as the, a mentor of a lot of lower division teams. He would coach them. He would show them how to call plays and things like that. He's a very smart player. Excellent to have at snapper. Alex David, three-time All-Star. He's won two championships in this league. Looking for his third here this afternoon. Parker gets a snap, looks to her left. Toss it on the sideline. Big catch by David. Just goes out of bounds just outside the red zone. So Alex David for another big catch. Tackled or pushed out of bounds rather by Serge Pilon Jr. That was a wheel from the center. And Sarah Parker was able to drop it in in between the coverage, Serge Pilon, seeing it, he just didn't want to. He didn't want to bail on it, so he just made sure he made the tackle. Great tackle by Serge Pilon, but Alex David uh, just got enough to get the first down to put them in the other in, into the Power Rangers uh, defensive zone. So third down for what now? Down by 12, 18 to six. First down now. Parker gets the ball, goes to the middle once again. Gomo second. Oh, he had a second opportunity. Pilon got the tip on the ball originally. Gomo had a chance to get the pass off the deflection, but just fell short. The one thing you should not do is float a ball down the middle when Serge Pilon is on the field. He has the more, he has probably the best catch-up speed in the league, and he's going to be able to get there. Alexis Gomo had a second chance on that, um, and Alexis Gomo usually is a sure-handed guy. He should have had that. He had the height advantage as well on Serge. Parker probably thinking she put it high enough to be okay for Gomo, but as you talked about, Terry, the, the, the jumping ability, the leaping ability, if you will, of... One Serge Pilon, Gomon making up for that drop here on second down. Tackled by Const Constance Miller, who's uh, very good on defense. Uh, great play on that one. She knew she wasn't going to be able to get the ball, so as soon as it touched Alexis Gomon's hands, she pulled the flag off to make sure he doesn't get any extra yardage. That was just about a two-yard gain on that one. Yeah, short gain indeed. And Constance Miller, of course, she played for third down for what last spring? So jumping to the other side, if you will, playing for the defending co-ed champions in the Power Rangers. Parker now gets a snap. She goes to her left to Murphy. Catch touchdown. Now Jeremy Murphy is very good, and I have no idea if he's ever played in any of the higher divisions in this league. I don't think he has. Um, no, this is rookie year, actually. This, this is rookie year. Okay, so we'll get his number down, right? We're gonna play for, <laughs> he's gonna play for the commission, right, Brent? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so Jeremy Murphy has the matchup there. I think Serge was looking at Sarah's eyes as soon as Sarah turned to Jeremy. Uh, Serge bit on it, but good on Jeremy for catching the ball. He knew he was in the end zone, so if he got the flag, it didn't change anything. 18-12 for Power Rangers. One-point conversion now coming up. 
Oh, and that slam pass. She had Arsenal open, but she put the ball just behind them. Too many people around there. I think she put too many people in the same area, so everybody didn't. Nobody knew who was going to get the ball, and that's tough because in red zone, it it takes a lot. It takes a long time for quarterbacks to develop like a red zone playbook. Uh, we all know that Simon has no idea what he's doing in the red zone. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, you have to make sure that that you get something that's just good that's gonna work you know and it, even if you're overthrowing it whatever but don't put people in the same position because there's already so much traffic there you don't want to put as many people in that spot first down now for the power rangers villa def close to the flat to pilon he makes one man miss and a second and a makes third everybody taking miss. up the right sideline touchdown <laughs> power rangers surge pilon jr jeremy murphy slams the wall because he knew he almost had that one at the one yard line uh, Serge Pilon, like I said earlier, I, I've been there, man. You think you have the flag and it's in your hand, and all of a sudden he's gone 10 yards. And it's going to be tough because he is the fastest guy in this field right now. Jeremy Murphy was able to catch up to him, though. Good on him for able to catch up to him across the field. Um, but, you know, Serge, he's, he's honestly, he's probably the only guy that's undefendable in this league. So great, great play there, pardon me, by Pilon Jr., his second TD of the game, extending this lead by the Power Rangers now 24-12. No extra points so far, uh, Brent. Yep. So looking for the first extra point of the game. Making it, if they do, they'll make it a three possession game. Phil Daff right over the middle. Oh, Pass is caught. And the extra point is good. Good. I kind of jinxed it. I jinxed it positively. <laughs> <laughs> In the post game, we'll make sure to note that. Nicky Farinacci with the extra <laughs> point there. Yep. Nicky Farinacci, like I, I think I mentioned earlier, he's, he's not somebody who he doesn't really. You know, he plays hard and things, but he's he's more of a last guy. He wants to have fun. But when you give him the ball, he's going to make a really good play. He's a very athletic person. So good play there at the key key time for the rookie, Farinaccio. Signing the commission? Or what's going on? Simmer down there. <laughs> First down now. This is try Brent's first recruiting first in the booth. Well, it's recruiting. <laughs> Parker going to the right sideline. Nice catch. Was she able to get both feet in bounce? No. No. Rachel Baudouin making that nice catch on the sideline, but unfortunately only getting one foot in bounds. That was a really nice play. She ran the wheel from the opposite side. Now she ran it to the Alex David on the center from that on the on the left side. Now she did on the right side to Rachel Baudouin, who was her slot receiver. Uh, also her number one receiver so far today has the most catches. Uh, Rachel Baudouin was there. She's sure-handed as well. Uh, she was there. Unfortunately, she just uh, touched the line and she could, wasn't able to keep herself in. So just over 40 seconds remaining till five plays in the first half. Parker gets the ball on second down. Throws it over the middle of the field. Dangerous ball. And that's picked off. Oh, and that's a dangerous pass right there. Picked off by Nikki Farinaccio. Nikki Farinaccio with the catch. That pass was intended for Sarah Bortoluzzi Corval. But like I said, floating it down the middle in this league is not good because the field is already so small. So everybody's able to convert on the ball and be able to make a play. Nikki Farinaccio was in that zone right there. Big enough. He had the size matchup against uh, Bert, uh, Bortoluzzi Corval, so he was able to catch the ball. And great play by Nicky Farinaccio. Like we said, if given an opportunity, he's going to make a good play. So Farinaccio, who led the team with seven interceptions in the regular season, his first of the postseason, coming at a, a great time for the Power Rangers squad. If I were Tam right now, with 20 seconds left, I would take a shot. You have you have some good matchups here. If you if you send two guys from the left side, if let's say you send you send Serge and maybe um, Bellon. Yeah, exactly. Marie Lou, I was gonna call Emily Marie Lou Bellon. If you send them both deep, maybe on a like two skinny corners kind of thing, and you force it to whoever the whoever Jeremy Murphy most likely is the safety, whoever he takes, I think that's your best bet. So let's see, let's see what they do now on first down. Pinot's open in the right corner. And Vildep goes to his left. Oh, and a good defensive play. That ball was intended for Bellin. She was open. Did a good job on defense. To wait to see who that number is. That came over to make the uh, play. Rachel Baudouin, number yeah, 20. Yeah, there you go. Yep, number 20, Baudouin, you're right. So Rachel Baudouin makes a great play. She just gets in the face of him. Oh, they go hurry up offense here. Second down pass to the left side. Farinaccio's first catch of the game. Pick up of about five, maybe six yards on that play. Nick Farinaccio did a lot of movement for not a lot of yards at that point. Um, but good on time, you know, run a quick play. Guys, the second play is going to be hooks. The first play is we're going we're gonna to try and go deep. Uh, maybe he heard me say they should try and force a ball deep. Maybe. I'm Tony Romo. Maybe. <laughs> so now setting up, I think it's going to be about third. Third and one, maybe third and two on the play. About well, third and three, rather. Five players remaining in this first half. 
Philadelphia gets the snap. He goes to his right. And he's going to run for it. He does. He has enough for the first down, maybe more. Finally tackled on the play by number 10 of third down for what? Marika Dallaire yeah. was, the, was the tackle. Was, made the tackle yeah, there Delaire. on Tam for the first, for the first down. Uh, Tam knows that he's able to break the rusher. Seems like Charles Verro is a little off today. And, but you know what? Tam is a Division II quarterback and a very good Division II quarterback. So he's played against probably some of the better rushers in this league so he kind of knows what he's doing and it's no knock on Charles Barreau who's a very good player uh, but I think Tom has that that veteran experience he's in the Hall of Fame Tom for a reason oh is he no he didn't make it this year he was supposed to I voted for him pass in the left corner that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame <laughs> <laughs> wide open was the receiver Nicky Farnacho yeah, wide Nacho, open exactly. in the end zone, but Tom just I, I, he, he thought he had way too much real estate there so he floated it over and Nicky was there and what happens now Nicky gets bent and Tommy Trujados comes in See that? Hardly to follow the, of the wide receiver <laughs> no, on that play, but <laughs> I think he's just guessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Tommy bringing in Tommy's Tommy plays university football and he's a very good player and he never never touches the field on offense. Yeah, a member of the uh, U of M Caribbean. Is yeah, is it Caribbean? Yeah. Pass to the left side. Oh, and almost picked off by Murphy. He made the attempt by diving out of bounds. That was a I like this Murphy guy. Dangerous pass by uh, by Villadev. Jeremy Murphy making that crazy trying to make a crazy play uh if he caught that that would have been one of the best catches i've ever seen he came from from the blue line there and he dove all the way to the cone uh good under good under Jeremy murphy trying to get trying to make a play at least maybe change the momentum a bit because it looks like the momentum is all on the power rangers side if they're down for what get the ball back they need to score quick i don't know how many plays are left now with the ball go def going to his left now back to his right he avoids the sack Attempt by Verrill. He's running for it right down the middle. Philadelphia going right down Main Street. Tackled about the two yard line by Murphy. Solid gain right there by the one time All Star in Tam Villadef. One time, that's it. I would have given him a lot more than that. Tam is a savvy veteran in this league. And right there, he, Charles Verrill almost had the flag. He was reaching, 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 reaching. He just missed him. And Tam was able to break it up the middle when all the coverage was to the sidelines. Again, the Power Rangers here looking to defender Winter title from last season. Up 25 to 12, looking to increase that lead right here. Veladef gets a snap, goes to the flat. Big catch, Mary Lou Bellon for the touchdown. Mary Lou Bellon with her second touchdown of the game. Uh, I'm not surprised right now that he's been defeating her. She was the, she was somebody to look to look out for at the beginning of the uh, during the season. Uh, Jeremy Murphy's eyes. I don't know if you can see the replay on that one. Look, his eyes right now. They get super big, and he's about to say, "Oh, I'm gonna pick that off," and I missed it. <laughs> It just Marie Bernal was in front of him, made the nice catch. But if that was tipped, Murphy catches that and he probably houses it. I mean, and you talked about obviously the both of us about the the explosion of Murphy, but he needs to he needs to maybe increase the awareness, realizing where he is in the red zone. Well, he was in the end zone, he, exactly. He's in the end zone, but he's a little too deep. Yeah. He let the uh, the out route by Bellon get right in front of him. Well, they're going for two here. They're trying to end the game. Yeah. Have to get this to go up by 21. Phil Def, uh, pass back the option now. Looking to the right corner is Roldy. Way too high. Now he had to pass his way to bounce. <laughs> Tommy <laughs> throwing it. To, to, to we, we believe is Jasmine Farmer over there on the right side. Uh, wide open. Uh, but Tommy ha also had a wide open Mackinu Bell on the back of the end zone to the left side. Didn't see her there. Uh, tries to force it. Extra point. You go for two. Trying to make it nice. So now it is a 31 to 12 dominating lead by the Power Rangers over third down for what? Second half of action is going to be coming up in just a few minutes. So, partner, obviously, we see we talked about Power Rangers defending champs. They, they have one of the best uh, offenses in, in uh, the the co-ed division one. Pardon me, and just showing it right here with 31 points scored so far. They came in, in the playoffs, they scored uh, 34 points last week. They've almost matched that total in the first half. Yeah, I mean, they're just firing, man. They know they know that they have the, they have a very good defense that's going to back them up. So, Tam's able to just kind of relax, take it easy. You know, give it to his, his good receivers, be able to make take shots deep if he needs to. He's taken a few shots deep. They haven't worked out. Uh, Serge, like we said, he is the X factor on any team he plays on, on any defense he plays on. So Tam knows that he just needs to give him the ball, get open. I can run the ball. I have Marine Dubedan. I have Nicky Fernaccio. They're playing very well today. What I do want to see from third down for what on that side is to take longer with the ball. Uh, more short routes. Uh, she's trying to force it deep because she does have a very good arm. Sarah Parker, do, Sarah Parker does, and we've seen it throughout the year. Uh, she's one of the most impressive players in this league. And the fact is that 
if she just dumbs it down to an Alex David style offense, I think that she'll be able to be a lot more efficient. Take the ball away from Power Rangers because right now they have way too much momentum. But now I got to ask you. I mean, you talked about having t taking the time on offense, being third down for what? Right now they're 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 down by 19 points. I mean, do they have enough time to come back if they go to that slow, methodical offense? Well, they do have enough time. It's three scores, uh, four scores technically. Actually, no, three scores uh, with an extra point. It's very doable. I mean, we've seen teams score. Like, they just scored. Power Rangers scored 31 points in the first half. They can do the same thing. They're a very capable team to be able to do so. They just need to dumb it down and take the ball away from Power Rangers. As soon as Tam gets the ball, he's running five six plays sometimes and that kills your clock the first drive took about seven to eight minutes so just to say for tam it's it, that's what that's what it's going to be he's going to be like well, i'm just going to take our time relax he knows he has a very good defense behind him that's going to cover for him so for third down for what take your time make sure you score on every single drive don't force it and you'll be fine and now we go back i mentioned at the top these two teams met in week four third down for what winning this, the game uh 30 to 29 now in that game obviously sarah parker had four tds jeremy murphy our, your, your main man if you will with yeah, three of those uh <laughs> touchdown catches and a pick six on defense so obviously they're, they're arguably the two best players on that team no disrespect obviously to alex david and uh, alexi gomal but how important do you think it is, is will be for the, the the combo if you will of parker and murphy just themselves to pick up their game in the second half so jeremy murphy's got to do a little bit more you know he's trying to make he's trying to make too many too many big plays where he just needs to make the simple plays uh you can tell he's kind of visibly frustrated right now he's a little bit he's he's extended away he's kind of separated away from his team uh he's, fr he's frustrated because he's an excellent football player and they're down they're down 19 points right now going to the second half they worked hard all year uh they were eight and no they never lost they beat this team before they know they can beat them and they're down right now they're down 19 points and it's for them they don't know what's going on so it's going to be interesting to see but i do expect jeremy murphy to do a lot more uh, in the second half and now we talked about obviously uh, third down for what with the best offense 30 300 points in the regular season taking on the best defense right now in uh the power rangers they let in only 99 points in the entire season that's crazy and uh, obviously as we're seeing so far this afternoon only 12 points what do the power rangers have to do defensively to ma make sure they come out of here with the w for force the ball deep for, uh, sorry, force, force the short play because if she, if she forces it deep, if she goes deep, they're going to be able to pick it off. You have Nikki, you have uh, Wade Shawcross, and you have Serge that are going to be able to pick the deep balls. Make her go, f make her go short. Right, so they're down for what now? Starting with the ball on offense in the second half. Pass caught by Vero. It's a good job by Vero picking up about eight yards on that play. Tackle by Nikki Farinaccio. Charles Vero, I think it's his first catch of the game. Uh, oh no, second catch, he scored a touchdown in the first half as well. Uh, Charles Vero, somebody you need to give the ball constantly in order for, to, for him to get active, and in order for him to be a part of the offense. Easy play right there too, a little hook. They might do it again. Second down now, second down on the boat, four. Slants and hooks. Pass right there, there you go to Vero, good call, Terry. He had a deep, he had a, she had a deep here, but Serge was eyeing it, and I think that's just gonna be the decoy. Jeremy's gonna be going deep, take Serge away from the play, so she'll be able to read the rest of the play. It'll play, you'll play four on four off, uh, four on four instead of five on five. Well, six on six there. But we don't care about the quarterback in the rush. <laughs> unimportant. Unimportant, unimportant. Five football. They always say the most important is down the line. Quarterback, snapper, rusher. Makes me feel special. <laughs> You not so much. <laughs> First down now and 10 for the third down for what? Parker gets the ball, looks to her right. Dangerous pass. It looked like her and Verrell weren't on the same page now, and I think she expected him to do another hook on the sideline where Verrell ended up doing pretty much a post. Uh, it was kind of like a deep in, and then Rachel Baudouin was doing an out. I think she was trying to f uh, throw the out kind of to gain yards at the same time to Rachel Baudouin. Uh, just maybe a little bit of communication on how deep the route should be. Uh, but either way, at Charles Verreau on that deep end, he was open. If she had seen it and she had thrown to him, he was open. He probably would be able to get a touchdown. I mean, maybe not because Serge would have caught up to him at some point there. Second down now, Parker. She's going deep. She has man, and that's picked off. She's looking for Verreau once again, but... She had him, though. She had him. She, that was a, just a bad ball. It was very uncharacteristic of Sarah Parker to throw, the, throw that ball like that. She threw a duck. Normally, she throws a very good spiral. She throws it on a rope. But that one was a duck in the air. It was just... Nikki was just, Nikki didn't even know where he was on that play. He just turned around. And he's like, oh, the ball's coming, and he just caught it. You know what I mean? Good for him for being there, but Charles Verreau had him. He beat him deep, and, and I think Sarah Parker noticed that. And good on her for noticing it right away, but it was just a bad throw, and it's unfortunate. Yes, the same goes, fool me once, fool me twice. Fernacho wasn't going to be fooled on, on that play. Good job by the rookie. 
Run by Villadef on first down. Pick up of about three, maybe four yards on that run. Alexi Gomon with the diving tackle there on Tam Villadef. Tam, uh, if you saw the before the play, I don't know if we're gonna get the I don't know if we're gonna get the replay on that, but he kind of he looked at Serge and he pointed to the left. So the rusher kind of went to that side too. He broke the rusher and took off. So you know, smart plays, those little veteran plays that people don't really yeah, the intangibles I would say. Second down now in about seven. For Power Rangers offense, pass to the left side, way over the head of Mary Lou Bellin. If she was just a little bit taller, you know, <laughs> if she was a little bit taller, two, she three. still wouldn't have caught it, and. Um, Tam is a smaller guy. He should be insulted that he's trying to overthrow his receivers like that. He hates being overthrown, so I don't know why he would do that. We saw early in this drive, Sarah Parker, who right now is on the sideline, trying to collect her thoughts. She's leaned down for a second. She went over. She's being consoled a little bit or given some mentorship, if you will, by <laughs> Alex David. There you go. Third down now. Villadef deep in his own territory. He goes up the left sideline, intended for Bellon. Just out of reach of the receiver. She's she going one for one on the sideline with Baudouin. She runs really good routes. And I love this match, this one on one, Rachel Baudouin and Magidou, but I love that matchup. Definitely. It's really fun to watch, you know? And, uh, and I think Magidou, obviously, she's had she's two touchdowns, maybe three, I think. And she's able to, uh, I think she's able to burn every single play. Right now, I think it's fourth down, yeah. yeah. It is fourth. How comfortable is it when you're quarterback and you're playing with a 19 point lead? You, f you don't have, you have I no pressure. My quarterback wasn't able to get me those leads uh, <laughs> <laughs> any time this year. What's up, Chris Olsen? Uh, fourth down and long now for the Power Rangers offense. Pass up the middle, and that's picked by Gomon. And Gomon, you can see right there, that pass is intended for Bella. And Gomon, uh, Villa left to telegraph that pass. Gomon Absolutely. was just sitting and waiting. So if you punt it, it goes to the half because they're, they're in within their five yards. So if you punt it, it goes to the half. At that point, you just take, try and get a first down. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you're pretty much in the same situation. <clears throat> Good on Alexi Gomon to do that, to, to catch that interception. In the Division Three semifinals and quarterfinals, he dropped an interception against uh, the champions, Bearskins, in order yeah. and, and lost that game. No, it was actually against the uh, Southampton Institute of Technology. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was against shit. He dropped the interception. Here's a pass. And that, whoa. Pilon jumped up to get it. That pass away to balance. Gomo, you're talking about, yeah, the uh, semifinals against the South uh, Harmon Institute of Technology. And not only did he drop an interception, he actually dropped what would have been a game ceiling long, would have been a touchdown actually for the guy that going up the left sideline. Jesse Dupuis throwing a pass, a little wobbly as usual on the deep pass by yeah. Dupuis. But Gomo had enough time to turn around. He ended up dropping that ball. I remember, yeah. And then, that, was uh, the, that was on the fourth yeah. down. They would have probably would have been able exactly. to win the game that way. Uh, so right now, Jeremy Murphy seems a little frustrated. Sarah Parker got the ball back. Don't force it deep. Look who's trailing deep. Don't force it deep. Just continue doing your offense. I'm going to ask you about that fourth down play in a second right after this one. Parker looking for someone to pass it to, and she is sacked. Roley Trojatos with the sack, his first of the game. And I want to go back to that fourth down play, obviously, with the Power Rangers going for it. If you're going on there, I know you talked about him making a smart play by getting the pick. But, I mean, if you drop the interception, your offense then gets the ball inside the five-yard line. That's Why not just drop it? That's a very good point, and a lot of people don't. We're in a, we're, we play in a league where the stats are updated automatically, right? Everybody wants their stats. So it's it's the second nature. And I know Alexi Gomo is a very smart player. He probably just didn't realize. He's like, I'm just going to make a play, and that's it, right? You can't knock him for that, but it's like if he knew where he was, if he knew the situation, if he really thought about it before the play, he would have just knocked it down. Parker checking her wristband, making sure the play is okay. She gets the ball, face to the left, she goes to the right. She has David open in the flats. Picks up about six, maybe seven yards on that play. Alex David with a new haircut and a wide open catch for Alex David. Uh, great awareness by Sarah to look at all her reads. She, she did everybody on the, on the field there. She went left to right, all the way to Alex, and she just dumped it off to him. So it wasn't enough though to pick up the first down, so it's gonna be fourth down. So it's gonna be about fourth. See what the yardage is here. In fourth and about five, maybe six for the third down for what offense? Tackle on the previous players by Farinaccio. Oh. oh he got Thomas Tommy got on the outside. Yeah, but he got back. Pass over the middle. Caught by Vero, but not in bounds. Oh. And if I'm uh, if I'm the Power Rangers gonna challenge that I, play, I would I would 100 percent challenge good that. Good catch play. by Vero, but he definitely only got one foot in bounds. Yeah, I think we, I think sure. we're gonna look at it right yep. now. I think they're gonna end up challenging it for sure. Didn't get. We're gonna see it right now. Yeah, I don't think even his right. I don't think his first foot got in either, and he knows it too. He's like, oh, okay. 
Uh, we might not see it at this angle, leagues. Yeah, we're, uh, we're looking at no, it here. No, so we need booth. we need the other angle, eagle. Yeah, this one. Did you see Pilon getting back on side with the Hopefully rush? Hopefully, our cameraman got it. No, that angle's not. I good saw either. the play happen, and I don't think definitely, he got in, but I'm not the not. official. This one's the best Whoa. angle, eagle. You got to know where the blue up. line is here, though. So that's one foot. No. And that second foot is definitely out of bounds. You can see, I don't see think the that shadow of a blue line there. We'll see what the officials come down with. My opinion, I don't think he came in. And from what we saw here, I don't think he was in at all. No, he was definitely not in. Like but what kind of a turning What kind of a turning point is that going to be for uh, third down for what if they're able to score on a play like that? It was a nice, it was a nice throw, just a little bit. Past yeah, the line. Yeah, answering your question. I mean, obviously, that's going to be a huge play. I mean, they need to get back in this game. But I'll ask you then, Terry, if this touchdown, if it gets overturned, like it should be, yeah. how much of a blow do you think that's going to be for the third down for what offense? I don't think so. I think that uh, they know that that's going to be open because it seems that those deep ends are open. She's just she's been floating them. She's been putting them way too high. So I think if she's able to put it a little bit on a rope, uh, a little more, a little more, a little more arm into it to force it in there, that would have been a touchdown for sure. Would have been a touchdown, uncontested. And I think she wouldn't she wouldn't have that pick to, uh, to Nikki Financial early on. She wouldn't have to pick the pick again to Nikki Financial on the right side there when Charles Rowe was open. She just needs to put a little bit more arm into it. I think she's just trying to place it every single time, which is isn't always the best thing. She needs a little bit of time when Tam threw that bullet three yard hook to Mahinu Benham's belly. I think he needs I think she needs to uh, to copy Tam a bit on that one. But it's a big turning point. So regardless of what happens here the third down for what team will be trailing and in the season so far this is actually the first time that uh sorry the second time rather let me correct myself first time first time in the playoffs it'll be the third time overall the third down for what is trailing after halftime they're two and all though they were trailing the savage and trailing to these very same power rangers in the regular season they came back to beat both teams and for the power rangers they're seven and one when leading at the half with the only loss coming to the aforementioned third down for what in that first game that they played in the regular season tam threw two interceptions as well one of them was a pick six to jeremy murphy and i think that jeremy murphy is visibly frustrated because he knows he's, he's able to make a play and you see his the body language right everything man his non-verbal right everybody knows he, you can see it and they all look deflated but they it, that's exactly it you can yeah. see it on the you can see it on his face you can see it on the quarterback sarah parker as well you see it on alex david too you know it if they're not confident right now, and I think that touchdown would give them a little bit of confidence in order to continue playing this game to make sure that they they uh, they come back and maybe make a run for it. You know, if they score that, they're only down 13 points to get an extra point. They're down 12, and it's two scores. You get another pick, you get a stop. It's possible, you know. But, but, but that, time time is against them right now. But that is the key. You, you said getting an extra point. They had they're all for two so far so in far, the afternoon. Yeah. And so far, we only have one extra point that's been that's been hit right and. Yep. So I mean, extra points, like I said earlier, are going to be huge. I think it's. I think it's. I think we're taking way too long with this. Right foot. One foot got in. I don't think. I don't think it's. I think it's his. His one foot hit the line, and then his second foot um, was completely out. But we'll see. That's what I saw from here. Yeah, we apologize. But who for knows? You know, my eyes are not the best. Yeah, we apologize for the long delay. But again, we want to get this right, so it's definitely worth the wait. How surprised are you, Terry? Then I mean, we go back to that regular season game. We talked about uh, third down for what, winning 30 to 29. The Power Rangers had Chris Millard, a three-time All-Star. He got two touchdowns on offense <laughs> and a pick as well on defense. I mean, he's obviously not in the lineup this afternoon, but no. how surprised are you? We felt the presence of a guy like Millard at the score that we're seeing so far. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised at all because we have Sarah. I mean, I play with Chris Millard. I know the effect that he can have on an offense. I know the effect he can have on the defense as well. Um, but, you know, on this team, you know, they're all close. You know, they're all friends. You can tell, you know, they all get along. Uh, to me, a guy like Wade Shawcross, who's very experienced in this league, played in Division Three uh, with Mongoose, played in a few other teams as well. Um, and then you have Serge Pilon, like I said earlier, probably considered to be the best player in FPF, uh, if not first and second best, you know what I mean? So for him, uh, he knows that he's going to be able to make a play. He made two crazy touchdowns. You know what I mean? One, he broke it from the left side of the field all the way to the right side of the field. Nobody on the third down for what's team was able to stop him. Uh, another play, he just broke it down. Jeremy Murphy almost had him, but as fast as Jeremy Murphy is, not as fast as Serge Pilon. And flag football is a speed game. 100% speed. If you're fast, you'll do well. You'll do well enough. Provided you can catch and cover it. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so I can't do any of those, so I don't know why I still play. 
Yeah, we talked about earlier, obviously, the win last year by the Power Rangers, the defending co okay. co division champs, they beat so TC 31 18. So it's inconclusive, which means it's going to be a touchdown. And it's going to be a touchdown, and it um, so and that's your second a, challenge. So it's going to be a 31 to 18 lead now. This touchdown standing for the Power Rangers. Touchdown. And there you go, we got the signal right there by the official. It is a touchdown. 31 18, 18 lead now, part of me by the Power Rangers. Obviously, Terry, third down for what's going to have to go for two on this extra point conversion. I think so. I mean, a sigh of relief on Sarah Parker's part for sure, you know, knowing that she uh, got away with one there, that she's able to, to get the touchdown, to get a lead. Uh, now they're going to go for a one. Yep. It's what they like to do. It's, you go with what you're comfortable with in extra points. You know, it's at the end of the day, you're, if you go for two, you're going to be down by 11. So it so doesn't make a difference. So Over now, uh, stacking the receivers on their left, to the left of Parker, our right. Pass over the middle, catch by David, touchdown, or expert conversion rather, for once, and a 31-19 lead for the Power Rangers. That was a very smart play right there. I think there was a little bit of confusion on the line, uh, and then Alex David was just wide open. Everybody was standing. If you watch the play again, you see everybody was on their heels watching the play develop. The only one that was running was Alex. So good on Sarah. She gets the extra point. Now they're down by 12. It's two touchdowns. It's a very, very winnable game for th third down for what, but they have to get a stop right now. So now, obviously, saying what you just said about this being a winnable game and needing a stop, if you're the Power Rangers, what are you doing on offense right now? If I'm a Power Ranger right now, you just keep it simple. You know, if you, you go one, two short plays, maybe force a ball deep, overthrow it so only your receiver can get it, uh, try to put a dagger on, but there's still a lot of time left, so you just continue what you've been doing all game. Will Def gets a snap. Looks over the middle. He has a receiver. Good throw and a good catch right there. Catch made by number two, Valerie Verdi. Valerie Verdi, who was the one that made the interception on the first play of the game as well. Uh, <laughs> and Tam right there, she just she just told him, you give him, you gave it a little, you, you threw it a little hard there, and uh, hit her in the hit her in the chest, and she was complaining about it because Tam really guns that ball in. So good catch there by Verdi. Second down now. Tam gets the snap, looking to his red again. Intended for Verdi. Oh, it's almost picked off by Alessi Gomon. Right through the hands of the uh, normally sure-handed Alexi Gomon, but I think at that point it was just a weird play. Uh, if he caught that, would have been a crazy catch, absolutely. But Alexi Gomon's there, man. He's he's reading his eyes. He he's reading Tam's eyes. He knows where he's going, so he's trusting himself, and he knows he's there. I honestly think right now that they're gonna get a pick. Third and four is gonna get an interception. Third and four now for the Power Rangers offense. Pass to the left side, and that's way over Farinaccio's head, bringing a fourth down now and five for the Power Rangers. And so we talked about th throughout the game with uh, Villadev, strong arm, but sometimes puts a little too much mustard on those passes. That was a lot of mustard right there. That was mustard seats. He, uh, he, he, he really launched it in there, but I think it's just, it's just the way he throws. But right now it's third and five. Probably, yeah, thir about a third and five or fourth? It's fourth down, fourth and five right now. So this is huge. I expect him to take a run. We'll see what Villadev does. He gets the ball, looks to his left. Pass on the left sideline. Good old touchdown. What a catch. No. Nicky Farinaccio. Nicky Farinaccio with a great catch. Oh. Spins the ball. No flag. Okay. Uh, Charles Varro had good coverage there. He went up for it. He looked like, I thought he was going to knock it down. Oh, I and thought it, that for it went sure. right, right, right next to his hand. And he was able to, you can probably see right here as Tam takes a snap. He looks deep. He sees the coverage that he, I guess he wants. It, oh, he almost you, had it, man. That would have been a very nice play by Charles Verrill. And you can't blame the coverage right there by Verrill. He has superb yeah, coverage. He just, he just missed the ball. So he jumped up to try and knock it down. Yeah, there's the height advantage there with Nicky, but at the end of the day, Charles Verrill was there. He could have made that play. It's unfortunate because if that was the – I believe it was the fourth down, yeah. that would have been a turn down. That's a TSN turning point right there, <laughs> the FPF <laughs> turning point. So now going for a one-point conversion for 37-19 at 19 lead now. The Power Rangers pass to the right corner, and it's caught in balance. One-point conversion is good. One-point one conversion was caught by Constance Miller of yep. uh, Power Rangers. Uh, good on her. She kind of did a little wheel to the back of the end zone there. Tam saw it, floated it in there, didn't force it in, and she was able to make an easy catch in the back of the end zone. Constance Miller, we talked about before, formerly a third down for what? Second-year player. So right now, Sarah Parker's got to continue her offense. She's been able to, she wants to throw a deep. If that's what you're comfortable with, go, but make sure it's the right read. And make sure you put a little bit more mustard like Tam does usually, uh, because you don't want to get picked off for a third time. So the Power Rangers have reestablished a 19 point lead up right now, 38-19. Over third down for what? Just outside of 10 and a half minutes remaining in the second half. Brent Bach and Terry Tam with you from the Bell Sports Complex. Parker going down the right side. Nice catch, but out of bounds. Edward Arsenal. 
in there with tight coverage. What was the aforementioned Nicky Farinaccio? Nicky Farinaccio um, looked like he blew a tire there, and if it, was, if it wasn't so close to the sideline, uh, Eduardo Arsenal would have been able to come down with it and maybe get a touchdown. Um, but because he was so close, he had to make a toe dragon catch, ended up falling out of bounds. Uh, good for Nicky Farinaccio to be there, but it looked like he kind of stumbled on his own feet there, almost, almost had another situation what happened with Charles Rowe before. Waiting for the snap. Now it's Parker. She gets it. Looking to the left-hand side. And that's batted down. I believe the third batted ball by Tommy Roly Trajatos. He has three PDs right now as a rusher. He has one sack. And Tommy Roly, who is one of the better defenders in this league, top to bottom, and he's able to make a huge play. Uh, Sarah Parker is very flustered right now. She has no time to do anything. And when she does... It's not, it doesn't look good, and she's not able to, she hasn't been able to set her feet all game. Right now it's third down. Third down, uh, yeah, third down, I believe. Third down and 10. Third and long now facing this third down for what? Offense. Parker now to the right. Caught by Arsenal. Tries to make one man miss. So he can. Will that be enough for a first down? Yes, it is. First down, third down for what? I got worried there because it looked like he had the first down and then ran backwards. And uh, that's a mistake that a lot of people do, not knowing where they are in the field. Uh, they try and get the extra yards or they want to break the tackle. But sometimes you run backwards, you take away the yards that you already gained, right? And you, the, the point of the game is to get us in the end zone. You don't want to come backwards, right? But a lot of guys trust their own speed. And But good on him, he actually got the first down there and they're going to start with the first set of downs. First down now, Parker. Dangerous pass and it's picked off. Farmer with the interception. That ball went off of the hands of Sarah Bordaluzzi Corval. That was, that was great awareness just to be there. Uh, she's sitting in her coverage. It was just a bad throw by Sarah Parker. Again, uh, she's, been, she's been off today, man, and it's very uncharacteristic of her. She's thrown just as many picks th in today, almost as many picks today as she's thrown all year. She's had five interceptions this year. She's, only, she's, thrown, she's already thrown three today. So it's, when, you try, when, you're, when you're trailing, you try to force things. You think you see things that aren't there. Uh, it's hard to miss the lime green jerseys, though. I will say that. Yeah, but I, do you think maybe you put that more on a receiver who got the ball clearly in the hand and she yeah. bobbled it? Yeah, a little bit, but it's always going to be the quarterback's fault, no matter what. Always. It's a catch by Roly Trajados, taken down by Baudouin. So Rachel Baudouin there with the tackle. Uh, Tommy getting his, his share of play on offense right now. He doesn't usually play on offense, but right now he's coming in just to get some extra reps and uh, give some legs back to some of the receivers. So pick up of about five, maybe six yards on that play. Setting up now, second down and manageable. So up by 19, seven, just over seven minutes left. Power Rangers right now, they score, they go up by 25. I think right now the the uh, proverbial, the fat lady has sung, I think. We'll see. There could be a pick six right now. Maybe not. Pass right down the middle. Nice First. catch. Out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know. I think her feet were in unless she ran out of bounds first. It's I would possible. love to see that again. That pass, and of course, was 10 for number 11, Mary Lou Bellon. Very nice throw by Tam down the middle there. Uh, no, looks like she was on her, the line. Yeah, her left foot looked like it was touching the line. She caught that ball. Good call by the officials. Though. A very rare good call by the officials. <laughs> <laughs> Walter Berry in the booth. Walter Berry in the booth. <laughs> I'm just giving dirty looks. <laughs> I, I love the officials. Love all of them. <laughs> Especially Walter. Third down now, pass to the flats, caught by Pilon, miss one man, miss it another. It, it doesn't make sense. Touchdown, Power Rangers. It doesn't make sense. It, it, they all had the flag in their hand and it's just gone. It just disappears. It's, it's, it's the serious Pilon effect. It, yeah. it's, 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 from my experience, playing a little bit of defense here in FEF, sometimes the flag, as you mentioned, is right in your hand and you, you go to pull it and it just... Manages to slip through sometimes. It slips right through your hands, and I don't know, man. It's 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 one of those things. It's like the the ninth wonder of the world, I guess. Serge Pilon's flags, they just disappear. But right now, they're up 44 to 19. Uh, they're up by 25. I think it's pretty much over now. They're going for one to go up by 26. But end the round pass now, Bellon, who's thrown a couple of passes this season. Her pass back to fill the fall is incomplete. Bellon trying to make the pass, she was falling to the ground, hounded by Edward Arsenal. As she, as she giggles with it because she, know that she, she knew that she kind of messed that up. Uh, you know what? I'm going to blame Tam for that. He should have caught it. I'm going to blame Tam. <laughs> Bellon's actually thrown a couple of times this yeah. season. Yeah, they use, her, they use her a lot on those, those end arounds and things like that. They use her as, a second, as her second quarterback. She does have a very good arm. 
It'd be interesting to see if she plays quarterback next year. Well, she got in a little bit of action uh, in the first round of the playoffs against the ATH squad, all the hottie squad. It's <laughs> their full name. Oh, for real? That's what it is? <laughs> yep. That's funny. Going three for four for 24 yards, averaging eight yards a pass. But that pass on that conversion attempt was definitely not, not one of her best. Yeah. First down now for the third down for what offense? Parker gets the ball, looks to pass. He gets over the middle. Gomon, he drops it. And that's been the story for Alexis Gomon in the postseason, no matter what team he's played on. <laughs> that's what it looks like, you know what I mean? So that's an easy catch for him to make. He had two chances at that catch, and he should have made it. It's very weird for me to see Alexis Gomon do this because I've seen him make such crazy catches, and he's such a good player. It's very weird. It's just, it's, it's honestly, it's in your head. As soon as you drop one, you're going to drop a few after that. Yeah, Gomon, definitely a phenomenal player, just uh, not bringing his A game here this afternoon for his team. But neither are the rest of the offense. Here's a pass deep for Murphy. It's picked off by Pilon. And Pilon coming down awkwardly on that left ankle. Will they give him the INT? Yes, they will. It looks like, yeah, they, the referee uh, down the sideline called it for a pick. That was a very nice play by him. He didn't have the size matchup, but he came down, rolled on his ankle, as you're going to see right here on his left foot. As he, as he landed on his left foot, he kind of buckled it. That sucks. I've been there before. It, it's really tough, especially when you're when you're somebody like Serge who you you take a lot of ankles. You break them all. You don't want to break your own. On the bench right now, trying to flex his knee and his ankle. Just under four minutes left. As soon as this drive is over, I think the game's going to be done. Hopefully he's not a knee injury. He's holding his knee right now on the bench. Nice pass by Veldef to Ballon. Tackle again by Baudouin. Seems like every time... That uh, Bellon catches the ball inbounds, but Dwayne is right there to make the tackle. Two players who definitely stood out in this contest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rachel Baudouin is unreal, man. She's been playing out of her mind today. Just it's unfortunate that the, the entire team hasn't been hasn't been playing behind her, but she's for sure their MVP, I think. Second down now on about six for the Power Rangers offense. Villadef gets the snap, looks to his right, throws it to the flats. Nice catch and a tackle right there by Alex David. Catch by Constance Milat, yep. number 23. Who used to play? You, you said she played for third yeah. down for what last year? Yeah, she played oh, for third, third down for what last year. I wonder what happened there. Some internal beef? It's possible. Maybe she got into a fight with Sarah Parker. Terry I Tam always I'm starting rumors. <laughs> starting rumors. Starting rumors. So Terry does best. <laughs> <laughs> third down now on one. Catch by Ballon. Tackle on the play by Arsenal. Magalou Benna tried to do her best Serge Pilon impersonation by breaking tackles, but it didn't work on that one. Uh, she picked up enough for the first down. No extending this drive. A 44-19 lead for the Power Rangers over third down for what? Just over two and a half minutes remaining in this game. Brembach and Terry Time with you live from the Bell Sports Complex. First down now for the Power Rangers. I'm Bill surprised at the, the inactivity of uh, Charles Verro today. Dev gets the snap. Quick pass, but a four to five yard pickup by Roli Trojotes. So, Charles Rowe was complaining to the referee about something on that. I don't know what it is, uh, but I think the frustration has officially kicked in for everybody on third down for what, which, you know, I think uh, we've all been there. It looks like he's either complaining possibly about a pick or maybe even rusher interference. I didn't see one, so. Second down now, second and about five. Bill Def goes to his left oh. and his right. He's sacked by Vero. Vero now, I believe that's his first sack of the contest. That's amazing. I mean, finally, I think it's like he, he picked up the flag as if it's like, okay, a weight was lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> kind of too little too late at this point, but at least he, he's able to say, okay, I did something. I, I didn't, I'm not going to be the guy who just got burnt on defense. You know what I mean? I'm going to be the guy who made a sack, made a nice play at least. And they're all still playing. You know, Alex David's playing on defense right now. He didn't really play too much defense today. Uh, Jeremy Murphy sitting on the sideline, discouraged because he knows the game is over already. Power Rangers smartly now taking all the time they need and can. Vildev gets the snap, looking down the middle. She has a target over the middle. That's number nine for the Power Rangers. Jenny Seguin. Yeah, Jenny Seguin. Jenny Seguin. Her first, yeah, yeah. first catch of the postseason. First catch of the postseason, first catch of the game also, well, obviously. Um, what's happening is, is that Tam uh, took out all the guys and he put in all the girls on offense so they get them all catches. You know, that, I think they know the game is over at this point, so they just want to be able to. Tom wants to spread the ball to everybody on the team. Well, except for the snapper position. You still have uh, Tommy. Yeah, good old Tommy down the middle there with his braids. Quick snap, quick move by Villadef. He gets sacked. So the second sack of the game now by Vero. Nice catch by Valerie Verdi, though. She was able to catch the ball in traffic. Just unfortunately, that time got sacked. That was fourth down, turnover on down. So now third down for what? Take the ball. Uh, you know, maybe to salvage something. Uh, maybe take, uh, what would you do? I would take a shot deep. 
Take a shot deep to somebody who deserves it today. I think, I mean, at this point, I mean, it's pretty safe to say. I mean, you want to make the score a little closer than what it seems, perhaps? Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to seem like a massive blowout, right? You want to close the gap a little bit. So Valerie Verdi showing some vertical on that catch. But again, as you said, it was a turnover on downs as uh, Vildef got sacked. Here's a pass on the left sideline. Nice catch by Murphy. Tam playing defense there. Eagle pointed it out to me. Tam uh, playing that right corner there. Tight coverage against Jeremy Murphy. Jeremy Murphy really had to fight for that three-yard hook. That was the hardest working three-yard hook I've ever seen, except for when you run them, <laughs> Brent. Nobody runs a three-yard hook better than Brent Botkin, I'll there tell you that. Go. And Game they're calling over. it. 18 points yep. with five plays left. The game is automatically won. So yeah, they've called this. So winning the game now, four, 44 rather to 19, are the Power Rangers, the division, co-ed division, pardon me, one champions. So a bit of a, uh, not exactly the finish we were expecting. We thought it was going to go down to the wire, but nonetheless, the Power Rangers winning the game decidedly over the previously now undefeated third down for what? Again, we see this final score, 44-19. to 19. How surprised are you to see a, a, a score like that? Uh, I'm surprised by the score just because of what the score was in the first game. Uh, that they played 30-29 to 29 for a third down for what? Not the other way around. Um, very evenly matched teams. I think that third down for what were just right today. It wasn't their day. They were out of their element today. You know, it's tough. You come to Brossard, there's a lot of mo a lot more people watching you. There's only one field, so everybody waiting to play is going to watch your game. So th there's a the little bit, that extra percentage, whatever it is, of pressure, and I think that's what hit Sarah Parker and third down for what today. Congratulations to Power Rangers for winning the championship. When we talked about Sarah Parker, one of the, the top quarterbacks in this co-ed division, even better than a couple of uh, quarterbacks in the men's divisions. Uh, they came into better the game. Better than me, that's for sure. <laughs> better than you and I. Better than Pete. Came, came into the <laughs> regular season. <laughs> Absolutely. Averaging, <better> <laughs> averaging 38 points a game. They, they dropped 26 last week in their playoff victory, but only 16 uh, this afternoon. 19, rather, this afternoon. It's definitely not on their, uh, not keeping pace with their regular season totals. <laughs> they have the MVP of the game. The trophy's being handed out. I'm going to go down to Simon Dajane for the MVP interview. MVP was, who'd they give it to? They gave it to Jasmine Farmer. We're sending this to Sherbrooke. That's Sherbrooke football tag. All right, come on. All right. And we're going down to Simon for the interview with Jasmine Farmer, our MVP. Jasmine Farmer had a very good day today. I'm surprised. I wouldn't have picked her, but, you know, she did have a good day. It was well-deserving of the MVP. I would have given it to Marie Lubin. Yeah, I, think that, I believe that's two of us. I would have given it to Mary, Lu, uh, Mary Lubin Lou for sure. You even maybe even give it to the quarterback, uh, Tim Villadeth. So, Simo is with Captain Tom Villadeth for the interview. All right. As you said, Tom Villadeth, quarterback to Power Rangers. Gagne a co-ed championship. Yeah. How does it feel? Feel great. Feel great. Ball out with some girls. Like, they're amazing. Best girls in the league, for sure. Hands up. And, uh... Si c'était pas deux autres, c'est on n'aurait pas d'équipe en ce moment. C'est mes filles qui ont toutes fait toute l'année, qui ont ballé toute l'année, puis euh, c'est là que ça nous mène. C'est comment différent de jouer co genre D1, D2, D3? Euh, moi, c'est plus le fun parce que je me force à lancer aux filles. Je leur donne des jeux, je donne des routes. Mes filles font des, des meilleures routes que certains gars font dans la ligue. Right. Puis, euh, ouais, euh, c'est vraiment nice. Je suis là pour les développer dans leur collégial, anniversaire, whatever, qu'est-ce qu'ils font. Ben, c'est good, c'est good. All right, thanks, Tom. Right, thanks, Merci. Tom. Thank you, Simon. So there you have an interview with the quarterback of the Power Rangers, Tam Villadef. So again, just wrapping up quickly, a, a, a huge victory by the Power Rangers. Now, Terry, I got to ask you, I mean, you have to imagine if they're able to keep this squad intact for next year, will they be able to make it three in a row? I mean, I think so. I mean, they're all, they're all friends, right? They all play together very well. Uh, I don't see why they wouldn't keep the same roster. Uh, we spoke about a few players in the team. As you see some of the, some of the players celebrating their constant Constance, uh, uh, and um, and, Anthony, and Nikki Franacci are making those uh, the dancing a little bit, celebrating. They're a very, they're a very close, uh, close group. So I do expect them to come back this year. Hopefully, Serge Pilon's ankle or knee is good as they line up for the team picture with their championship t-shirts. So once again, for the Bell Sports Complex, the Power Rangers get the 44-19 win in our year back-to-back -back now. Their 2019 winter season co-ed Division I champions. For Terry Tam, I'm Brent Bakken saying thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, coming up next, it's the co-ed Division II championship game before between Ying and Yang. And I believe they're taking on It's a Match. So that'll be a good one. We're going to have that for you in a few minutes coming up here, so stay tuned.